This episode of Dr. After Dark is brought to you by Upstart and Best Fiends, and I'll tell you more about that later. Right now, let's get to the show. Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey everybody, welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Keep those emails coming at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com and the voice messages, which we really appreciate, at 818-253-1693. I'm told one day we'll have call capability, right, Nadav? But uh, now we don't. Yep. But one, Yep, one day we will. Thank you very much. Uh, time to go out to that voice you're hearing. It's Mark Norman. Um, that Mark, give me some of the particulars. Where can we find you? Hey, hey, you know me. I'm all over the uh, the interwebs, the tweets, the instas. I got a website. What's the gr- insta? Grinder, ba- browsers. Uh, Mark Norman uh, comedy dot com with a D. Norman. Yes, like Norman D. It's French. Normal. Yeah. Well, normal. I guess would be. I guess it would be with a D, wouldn't it? Normal. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. normal. The, the yeah. French are weird. I'm I'm from New Orleans, so it's all I'm all steeped in Creole cuntiness. No kidding. Oh yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Fun times. We'll get into that in a minute. First, I want to tell you I was in a Uber last night. Whoa. No, night before last. Quit bragging. No, no. And uh, the guy had his iPhone up and he was listening to you on Rogan. Get the hell out of town. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Must have been my dad. Yeah. And I thought, no, no. He was definitely not your dad. Oh, no, oh. no, no Norman and this guy. Middle Eastern. Uh, nah. I, I, you know, uh, Johnny Quest ethnicity, like uh, Johnny Quest villain oh, ethnicity, oh, like oh, the villain. questionable. Who knows? Gotcha, you never no gotcha. telling what this guy was. Yeah, I don't um, ask. They're hairy. Attractive, they're young, attractive young man. Okay. But speaking of getting yourself in trouble, which you almost did just now, uh, you were saying that on Rogan, which I didn't hear when I was listening in my Uber drive, uh-huh. uh, you said some things that you worried people were going to take it the wrong way. Well, I mean, you can't fart into a cup and seal it without somebody getting upset so i just right. uh, get nervous because you say one wrong thing and i i bash the the supposed heroes and uh i, I don't know i feel like it's gonna come back to haunt me i i disagree i i think we will i corolla pointed this out to me and i think he's right i think we will point at the dave Chappelle comedy special on netflix mm-hmm. as the moment that comedians were allowed to be comedians you think again. so i do i hope you've right. watched it have you seen I've it i've seen it twice yeah I'm a fan. did you notice i mean he's the perfect person he sees things and he sees it in a yeah. way and he's a genius and he says it yeah and he tells it everyone to suck it up and, and then if you watch the alec baldwin roast yeah again they were aware of that because corolla told me also that the that roast was on because of Chappelle. They feel sort of empowered. Right? Yeah. Wow. And it was on more getting your dick cut off jokes than I've ever heard for Caitlyn yeah. Jenner. <laughs> and, and and it was on. And it was just on. And and if you know, remember addressing the same group you were giving crap to, or Corolla said, Hey all you fuck sticks. This You're is right. this is our this is our safe space. It's comedy. It's if comedy. you're a friend, that's the goal here. So and, and the, you could have said that Three months ago. Yeah. Three months ago, there would have been this, uh, God, he needs to lose his job. Can- yes. Cancel, cancel, cancel. It's all the cancel culture. Well, what is the end game? What are they That's gaining? always been my question. Yeah. That's my question. That's my question. That was my question about the climate uh, um, demonstrations over the you know the weekends or so ago. It's well, like what's where, wrong with that? I no problem with it, but uh, what, what's the what's the goal? What uh, is your goal? Uh, when yes. I was youthful- it the feels go- good. Well, when I was a youth, we were, get out of Vietnam now. Yeah. Very clear goal. Sure. We're out in the street saying, do it. Uh-huh. Help with climate change. <laughs> do you want me the, the cows belching? Would you like to help with Recycling. or carbon capture? Or what, what should we do? Right, right. What do you want? And, I hear you. The same thing I think is in the, some of the woke stuff too. It's like, where, where are we going? Now I would argue, you correct me if I'm wrong on this. Please. It's been a net positive. Like every sort of extreme thing, it, it gets us in a better place. It just needs to come back towards the right. midline a little bit. It's like bit. a fever. It's got to break. Yeah. It's got to get bad before it breaks. I mean, breaks. there's a lot of awareness. There's a lot of more sensitivity. a lot yeah. of more thoughtfulness in our speech, right? That's a good thing. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. But censorship, bad. Bad, especially in comedy. Come on, we're a bunch of retards. Like, let us queef in, into, a, into Again, a taco. get on him for that word he yeah. used. The words yeah, that shall not be uttered, the R word. Get him at the sorry. Instagram and just make them, take him off Instagram. He deserves censorship. What's the red? Downsy, Waterhead? I don't know. Either way. Uh, but wait, why are you laughing, Drew? I thought this was not funny. And let and hey, hey, you, you, you cum stains. Let me find what I think is funny. You would never tell me what to be attracted to. Like, if I was like, hey, I like uh, gay guys with strap-ons and anal 
you know, uh, rim job. We'll, we'll hear more people, about that in a minute. Yeah, people go, "Good for you, you're a hero." All yeah, right, but yeah. if I if I'm if I find something funny, I'm not hurting anybody. You know, it's like we we jizz all over the Michael Jackson doc, but if I make a pedophile joke, I'm an asshole. It's like. I'm, the thing I'm saying is it not real. I'm not making a joke. That actually happened. That, to me, that's worse. Well, and to be fair, I've always thought comedy was to shine a light on reality to wow. make us look at it in a way that's enlightening. I agree, but we right? don't like reality anymore. Reality's out. Reality is out. I mean, it's, if you it's go, coming back. It's making a comeback. If you go, hey, uh, Tubbs, you got to lose a few LBs or you're gonna, you're gonna, your heart's going to stop. People go, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then if you go, hey, you know, white people get shot too by the cops. People go, whoa. I'm like, I'm, not, I'm just going off Google. I'm not. I'm not a bad guy. Don't don't get mad at me. That's reality. Get him, get him kicked off Instagram. He you can find him at Mark Norman. Is it at Mark Norman? Is that the the Instagram? At Mark Norm. Some Norm. real estate oh, twat got Mark Norman. Nice. And so, how was your appearance on Rogan? Other, it was other than that. It was great. I mean, uh, I think he's a level-headed, rational dude, and uh, yeah, he's a. I think he's a big buff scary guy with bald head and a big vein so i think people they, they they remember the kid who beat him up in high school and they think he's that guy but he's like a a bully bully you know he beats up the bully yeah. i think he's a good egg and uh, he just has his hobbies and wants to go shoot an elk and you know drink some creatine and do comedy so i, I i'm i'm a fan i like I, him i man. think he's exceptional and he's who, absolutely exceptional who's more open-minded he's talking to milo ia yep, and then he's talking to jordan peterson jordan and then you peterson, and then me and then the left guy he's all over the road right I think he's just trying to make sense of things that, yeah that, but that's yeah, people hate like. him they do i didn't know i thought he got oh. a little bit of a pass no, no, he gets oh, a ton really? of heat. Oh yeah, people think he's like an alt right guy, which is just a word people use now. We we go straight to the you're a Nazi, you're a racist. Right, like, you're either either you agree with me or you're something horrible. Yeah, it's an yeah. either or diathesis. It's kind of either weird. either you toe my line, or and I'm going to think of something yeah. horrible to call you, and that's what you are. You're a Nazi. You're right, alter. Blah, 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 blah. You know what it feels like when you're when you were a kid and you you you're mad at your mom or your dad for like not letting, and you go, I hate you. Yeah, it's just the worst that you can say. Yeah. You don't actually hate them. Yeah, but it's the worst thing, and it's yeah. the same with calling somebody a racist. Being a bigot in America, worst yeah. thing you can be, and all, and then to call somebody that that you don't know is so dangerous and I agree. dismissive it and, is and right. scary. You know, I I have it. I have been very active in the homeless problem here in this town, and uh, I haven't noticed any. Yeah, out here, I got to tell you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, I have I've picked up on page from their strategy because what's the that? Well, I'll tell you, the people that are getting in the way of us getting help for these people, I, I, you're getting in the way of helping people oh, that, that are right. that are dying three a day on our streets. Whoa. So three a day every day. So if you are getting in the way of that, you are a murderer. You are murdering people. You sure, are a murderer. Sure. So either either you get out of the way or you're a murderer. Yeah. That's it. So yeah, you want to, wow. that's the diathesis. That's the world we live in. So anyway, let's hear more about you. Where'd you, where'd you grow up? <laughs> I grew up in New Orleans, uh, right outside the French Quarter. Lost my virginity to a prostitute. Uh, oh. I had parents who were oh, checked hold out. On, and, hold on, hold on. Slow down, slow down. Sorry. How, how old was the prostitute experience? How was it? Or how, how old and how old? She was, was about 55. You? How old were you? And I was 16. 16. So how was it? It was fucking awesome. Okay. It was great. Was, I mean, it was all consensual. No, I mean, it was a little scary, and she had horrible breath and crazy, yeah. crazy tits. Ooh. But uh, she had the real ski slopes, oh, you know, the bananas. Interesting. But uh, it was great. I mean, it's weird, because whenever I tell that story, everybody laughs and high fives. But if that was flipped, woo! imagine if it was a 55-year-old guy banging a 16-year-old girl. It is a different thing. It is, but then, okay. But then everybody goes, men and women are the same. But then why aren't you acting the same when I tell the story? But I... Uh, I could go all all day about uh, yes. statutory. I, I was reading. I was reading an article this morning about gender differences and stuff. It was actually a, a book review, and and I thought, and the the conclusion of the article was, well, we're more similar than we are different as human beings, men and women. It's like, no kidding. Right. Yes, we right. we are just about exactly the same creatures with these distinct yes. qualities. Yes, there's some distinctness qualities biologically that just. Are just we have a bigger corpus callosum. We have just, they have bigger they they have a better brain. Yeah, they have better eggs. brains. They live longer. They have eggs. <laughs> yeah, I mean and, all these clear differences. Yeah, yeah, no, there are differences, and it and it has an effect. Now we're much more alike than we are different. Sure, except we, where we're different, which yeah. is a small percentage, and but we're different, and it's okay. And I like the differences. I like uh, hips and a small waist and a big nipple and a you know a bald vag stop talking about me that way all right anyone else hard so so so, so again uh your parents were checked out why 
I think they were just uh, their parents were checked out, and they're, they're just like, the custom outside of the French Quarter. Military. They went to you know they. My dad's got. I don't want to get into my dad's shit because I don't know what he wants out there. But he was talking about traumatizing childhood in the war or something. Or uh, his dad died in a drunk driving accident. Was he when he was two? So then the, the evil stepdad Ooh, came in yeah, yeah, yeah. and he, you know, he really fucked my dad up with the beating and oh. all that shit. Did he rain any of that down on you, or is he? No, to... no. He he went the other way, but yeah. you could see he was still. He's very. Oh. Um, he's one of those guys like I'm in the way. Sorry, like oh, yeah. you know. And uh, so I, as a kid, you see your male role model being very like, oh, well, uh, let me. But get he out was of in way. the military. Oh yeah. What 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 role? Jag. Yeah. Yeah, he was a military lawyer. Interesting. Yeah. So he's a. He cool sounds like dude. a nice guy. He's a great guy, but he's just um, not assertive. Not assertive. I mean, he would. He had a temper. Uh, but uh, huh. he was uh, he felt like he was a burden on everybody. Well, the temper certainly comes from all that physical trauma growing up. Probably, then, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then your mom? Uh, great mom, great mom. But my mom's... Uh, Except checked out. Well, she's she's uh, not good with the... Rea- I have a big reaction problem. That's that why mean? I like comedy. What do you I mean? need to laugh. Oh, she just doesn't... It's hard to get her to respond. Yes. And that really fucked me up as a kid. Because you'd go, Mom, can, let me listen to this. And she would go like... Which is the ultimate <laughs> insult. Well, in fact, in fact, it's actually, we do experiments with that in psych, clinical psychology called the still face reaction. Uh-huh. And it's traumatizing. Traumatizing. Kids. Yeah. It's called the, the mom still face. And the kids. Is that get, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look up still face on wow. uh, Google. You see all these experiments where the kids, the kids get like, they get disoriented. Mom is supposed to give a reaction on her face that gives you an understanding. Yes. A, a suggestion of understanding. And that's how you build in a connection to your own emotional landscape. Wow. Thus, your disconnection from your emotions. Still face. This is yeah. blowing my mind. It's nice to know there's a name for this yeah. fucking thing. Now, moms that, oh, these are the still face experiments. Oh, well, yeah. she's kind of hot. Yeah. But she's sitting there. See, there she is on the left, you the know, kid. interacting normally. And then she has the still face and you see the baby just go nuts. Yeah, that was see, me. See, look at the baby up on the right, up the right there. There uh-huh. she is interacting, right? And right. And there she is still wow. face. Wow. Yeah. Is it only moms? Uh, well, the research is done on moms and moms are the ones that have a higher level of attunement with babies, generally speaking. Wow. Not that dads can't do it, but all the research is certainly done there. So uh, my girlfriend who I'm seeing, she met my mom and she, uh, I was like, I can't wait for you to meet my mom and see, cause she's normal, girlfriend's normal. And she walked out of the room, she's like, oh, I felt like I was bombing in there. I'm like, welcome to my first 19 years of life. <laughs> I always thought I was bombing. So those moms, I usually think uh, oftentimes are chronically depressed. Ah, well, is, I don't want her to be sad. Is that the deal? Ah, she, she's kind of got her head in a book all day, and she's just a workaholic. She comes home, has a glass of wine, and just buries her head in a book, and then she goes to work, and she works hard. What's she do? She actually curates a museum in New Orleans, but she was a lawyer when I was a kid. Did she? Do you think there's any Aspergers or anything like that? Because that's another way to get maybe, to there. Maybe, yeah. maybe she's high functioning. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it's not you, her fault. It's just no, whatever no. this is. You know, maybe, maybe I don't know about all that. Spectrum so we stuff. will we will uh, add to our list, Nadav, of uh, potential causes of becoming a comedian. Yeah, mom with Aspergers. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> oh yeah. So Mark Mark will be case A. Right. Um, and so, other than the prostitution at 16, any other notable experiences growing up? Bedwetter. Till when? Chronic bedwetter till pretty late, like maybe 13. And, you know, people make um, much of that in the psychological literature, and yet sometimes it's, as they say, a cigar is just a good smoke. Right. Like, maybe they just didn't, it's just your biology, and they didn't prop- give you the proper mechanisms to deal with it. Like, sure. Like, put a bucket by your bedside, and or just wake <laughs> you up every four hours, or... No, nah, no, nah. but it ruins sleepovers, and your laughing stock, and it's just a Oof. bummer with the, uh, the, the yellow sheets, and, uh, you know, one time I was at a sleepover, and I woke up, and I had like six friends looking down over me, and one of them goes, why do you do this? I was oh. covered in urine, it really fucked me up. How old uh, were you? I was probably like eight, seven, eight. Mm. So it, it was tough, and you know, just people like, oh, a piss face, and I remember one time I, uh, I pissed all over myself. I, I could use a washing machine when I was like four. And uh, I pissed all in my clothes and everything in my sleeping bag, and I hid them, and I was up at like five, so I just had to, you know, run with it. And my friend was like, oh, where's your toy or whatever? And he unzipped my suitcase and opened it. And it just went whew, like oh. this urine stench went. And they went, ah, 
Ah, you fucking weirdo. Oh. Yeah, but it was fine. And but here's what I think really fucked me up. Girl, I was I was to bring up Adam a lot today, but he had bedwetting until he was like nine or ten. Oh yeah, yeah. it it, it kind of gives you a sense of reality. Like life isn't really fair for everybody and it's going to be harder for you and this sucks and they don't have that but you do it just kind of makes you go oh that's how the world works oh that's interesting so yeah. you really you really turned it into a positive what what age were you able to do that uh probably about a week ago oh uh, well it yeah. took a while yeah yeah but uh, therapy no therapy now i love therapy i'm yeah, a big yeah. therapy uh, douche i go once a week i love my guy old jew from the lower east side how long have been doing it about two years and i got all my friends on it and I, nothing I had, before nothing how nothing. old you know I'm tw- I'm 35. So are you are you talking about this now differently? If I have spoken to you three or four years ago, would you? Have- yeah, I okay. would have dismissed it. That ah, therapy, come on. No, no, but I mean things like bedwetting. Now you sort of understand it, and you know you have you have a maybe you're forgiving yourself. You're understanding the positive aspects of it. Yeah, totally. You know, you've made, made you see things about life that you wouldn't have seen for at sure. Your age and definitely, definitely. Huh, but here's here's what I think really screwed the pooch. Oh. Uh, my dad being so uh, I don't passive, wanna, not I don't want to say insecure, but he has low self worth. Uh-huh. I'll say that, which I I adopted. Uh huh. Me too. So he bought uh he got a wild hair pizzazz and bought a mansion in like the late eighties. So I was like five six, and it was in a poor black neighborhood, and it was dilapidated, no running water, nothing like that. Uh, but it looked good, you in know. New like, Orleans. Yeah, my, I own a mansion. How cool am I? You know. And but it didn't work. We had termites, and we got robbed all the time because people thought, oh, the white fl- family moved in, and they bought a man. These people must be loaded. Mm. And so we got robbed all the time. And I walked in on a couple robberies. My mom's Oof. always crying. And eventually, we got robbed six times a year. Maybe cars oh. got stolen, bike got stolen. I got a lot of racial tension. I got fucked with a lot. Uh, and eventually, two guys broke in with guns, tied my parents up. And Were you there? No, I was at a Mardi Gras parade. Uh. But my brother was there. I was probably 13, 14. And my brother was there, and they tied him up, and it traumatized my mom, and then we eventually moved. But that's what it took to get out of there. Mm. So then the back half of it, my dad made into a bed and breakfast because he needed income because, you know, this thing was so expensive. And uh, so it was weird growing up in this shithole house, but the back of it was serene and, and carpeted and, and had, like, Nice bedding and everything. That's, and we, for, that's for them, not you. Exactly. That's for the exactly. others. And we had to clean that every now and then. We had to go in and like change the bed and all that. We being? Me and my brother and my family. Like you, my mom. You were the only two kids? Yeah. And, and my mom would be making, it was a bed and breakfast, so yeah. she'd be making pancakes for them, and I'm eating uh, Cheerios over here. So that was weird, and I don't want to make it sound like my parents are bad people. They're good eggs and smart, good people, but it was a weird way to grow up, and we had a transvestite nanny named Enos, and she like took, or he took care of us. He was a cross-dresser. So hold on a second. So, so this was a male to female? Male, just the clothing. Still the still identified as a guy. Just just like a burlesque guy at night. A, a female, male to female cross-dresser? Yes. So, and and is, do you think maybe that was an early transgender, you know, before people Probably. really identified it accordingly? Yeah. yeah, he wore a wig and heels and would sweep up in the heels. In, and he was house. gay, yeah. So okay, so hold on a second. So I always have to chart these out for myself. Sure. So it was a male to female transgender manifesting as cross dressing. Mm-hmm. Had sex with men. Yes. Male. Have sex I'm throwing with a lot at you. I'm yeah, sorry. I, I get. It. I have just. I just think it all through. Yeah. He's a he's a thought leader. Yeah, I, yeah. I, and your and so I'm, your mom and dad must have been very very liberal, open. very open. Ex hippies, you know, used to live in San Francisco and all that. Like they. Do you think drugs hurt your mom? Maybe. No, they're, they're kind of square, to be honest. And and so, did they go to Woodstock or anything? Any fun stories like that? Nothing like that, but you know, they loved you know the the mamas and the papas and all that shit. So my dad had a lot of Bob Dylan records. They go to the Monterey Jazz Festival back when it first <laughs> probably, hit. yeah. yeah, yeah, all that shit. I wouldn't share those stories with you though. God. No, well, I remember I failed my drug test in high school, and my dad was like, "What do you?" I I smoked marijuana three times in my life, and you can't, uh, you know. And I remember being like, "Wow, that's it, three times." <laughs> You're not very cool. What a dork. Yeah, <laughs> live your life, you fucking loser. What was high school like for you? Uh, it was tough. Uh, I was so nervous. It was weird because in middle school and grammar school, I was the king. I was the funniest guy. Shucking Even in spite of the urine, huh? Class clown. Yeah, well, I had to get over it. Uh, you know, I had see. to make light you of all these for that. Do you, horrible think, things. do you think that's what started it? Oh yeah. Well, that and the still face. The still yeah, face yeah. fucked me. 
uh-huh. that still gets me. I'll be talking, I'll be on a hot date with a girl, and she gives me nothing. I'm like, ah, I'm oh, freaking yeah. out, you know. Oh, yeah. And then the wave of insecurity and therapy is going to be good for you. It's going to be good for you. Oh, it's already been. It's already yeah. been. Is, yeah. is it face to face therapy or on the couch? Face to face. Yeah, good. Yeah, That's he gives it to me hard too. Yeah, He's, good. He really pounds me. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 it was a weird upbringing. Like we got robbed so much. I got robbed like mugged you know kids would just take your bike you know do you still feel insecure because of that oh yeah oh yeah that, where do you live now now i live in the west village in manhattan oh nice yeah it's going well now but uh it was like, a tough go but i i was a janitor for years you know i'm i have no uh you know people like have that entitlement like i should be here you know you hear those comics and actors like why did i didn't get why didn't i get that role i'm like of course I didn't get the role. I'm me. It's me. I suck. So, so you and you got the low self-esteem gene from your dad too. Oh, big yeah. time. Big I think time. that's a, I, 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 I go back and forth thinking whether low or high self-esteem. I just think they're just different. Mm-hmm. But there's advantages to low self-esteem just as there are sure, to high. Sure, sure. Which is you take you take responsibility for everything. Yep, yep. You are delighted when things go your way because you don't anticipate it. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You worry about other people a lot. Yeah, oh, yeah. You're very t- Constantly. Attuned, attuned to everyone else, which is nice. It's nice quality. I mean, you can go too far for far right, with it, right? But uh, very interesting. And so, what happens to you in a in a setting of comedy must be really important, like with an audience. Oh, huge! Like when you when you bomb, it must oh, be. Oh, yeah. you have no idea. I do. If I was a fat chick, I'd be a cutter easily. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I never got those comics to go on. Me and Josh talked about this. He's a whatever you want to call it, producer here. He was. We were talking about these comics who go on stage and go. What else is going on? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm super high. What am I talking? What are we doing here? I'm like, you had all day, you twat. You know what you're doing. Bring it. These people got babysitters. They're paying a check. Like, how yeah. selfish are you? You you cunt. Like, put an act together. No, I, I um, hate that shit. We did a live After Dark show at Caroline's. And I think there were some walk-ins off the street who didn't quite know what they were getting into. Oh, yeah. And I could see it from the oh, stand. It that's drove all me you in. Think about. It's four people unhappy. I was that's it. That's I'm all with I, you. I I'm was with the you. whole night I was preoccupied about that. Even though it seems like everyone else enjoyed it. Yeah. I was thinking about that, even when I was doing the meet and greet later. Me and you both, Fatty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same shit. <laughs> so uh, other traumatic experiences you'd like to share with us, things that sort of stand out, things you're working on in therapy. Uh, well, I can't You've say- You've given me plenty, and you okay. don't have to tell me more if you don't want. No, but... I'm an open book. Yeah. Uh, I can't say no. I'll do anything you ask me. If well, you... Are, you, are you married? Uh, no. I, in a I'm, relationship? I, I was almost married, and I got out, and I'm so glad. I was with a gal for 13 years, Ooh. and I, I, I cheated, and I she caught me, and I think I wanted to get caught. Right, right. That's why I did it, pretty much. You nuked it. Yeah, because I couldn't, I'm, I'm weak. I can't, I don't want to, this is ironic, but I don't want to hurt her and go, yeah. I, I'm out. Yeah, even though I hurt plan. her a yeah. different way. No, I know yeah. you don't want to hurt her, so you cheat. Exactly. <laughs> that does, that doesn't I, hurt. I realize that's that's silly, but it it worked. <laughs> um, and it was hell. Like, you force yourself. You force yes, your own hand. Yes. I get exactly. that. Uh, and, and otherwise, your relationships are okay. You've, okay. I, I can't say my piece. I bottle. I, I, you know, I resent. I hate the person. Then we get into a big blowout fight, and I'm like, wow. Sometimes the uh, what you're describing uh, with your mom and all that stuff can lead to a little sexual compulsions. And hey, you, wow, oh, I we really had that there? problem. Yeah, talk to me about that. Yeah, uh, well, I was in that relationship, and then I got out, so I went ham. I was on Tinder and all those things, and I was fucking like two girls a day. And Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Not, Did you hurt like, anybody or yourself? Well, I mean, I got a couple STDs. I got... Uh, but but, but some, even so, I mean, you, you don't you feel like, oh, I probably... Was harmful what I did? You know, it was sort of hurting yeah, people? Yeah, a little bit, but I think most gals knew what... what I, I tried what to up? keep it uh, pretty honest and on the on the table, but yeah, I'm sure some girls were like, what the hell? I thought we had something. Right. You know, and I'm like, what are you kidding? I got, I'm, I'm like Trump with a wall up here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm not a fan of the wall, just making a joke. That's what you got to do now. You got to have I a know, little advisory. I know, you're right. You have to have a little qualifier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's interesting. And did that settle down with therapy or did it just... A little, yeah, because you're really lonely. You're just chasing that dragon. You're not actually getting anything. Even right when I put my dong in the, the gash, I was like, oh, this was a mistake. I just wanted I wanted you, you to want to fuck You were romantic, me. man. Oh, you yeah. Romantic. Well, these words are they're like, poetic. It sounds like Ronnie from the Stern Show. I'm trying to bring back hatchet wound and box and all that trim. You know, these are these are great words. And right. I need big words and and heavy words cuz I get I need a reaction cuz I'm a I fucking dweeb. Okay, so you so you 
you at the moment you start the intercourse, you get regretful and. Oh yeah, I just want them to want to do it and be willing to do it. That's why I never got these guys who are like forcing. Because the whole fun is them wanting to fuck you too. Right. You know, that's the beauty of it. I don't actually, I'm not going to disappoint you in bed. And how come it couldn't just stay with one person or a couple of people? How come it had to be spread amongst many, do you think? I think I just wanted that conquering, you know, like. Okay. You know, you don't want one beer, you want 10 beers. Right, right. You know. And did it get out of control at any point where you have worries about it? Oh, or yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, I was losing and sleep things. and I would have to drink a lot just to put up with the bullshit cat stories and all that. So Cat stories? Well, wow, these girls, they want to tell you about their aunt. Ah, like, Can you believe what happened? I'm like, I can't believe you think I give a shit, <laughs> you know? And I'm not saying all women are boring. I'm just saying, you know, after I, I don't care about any of it. I don't care about myself. Why would I care about your shoes? Right. You know? and, and now if you were to date somebody... We I am dating someone. And things are better. Things are great, yeah. You're able to care. You're able to be empathic. Yes, you're, you're yes. Available I have, to the person. I have problems with blowing up and all that. And I'm not, I should be more available, but I'm working on it. You have anger blowouts. Well, I bottle. And then when she goes, I hate when you do this, I go, well, I got 20 things yeah. that I want to talk about that yeah, I've been yeah. holding in for six months. Right. This is the, this is the emotional equivalent of the cheating. Like you, uh -huh. you wait until, and then you do something to... Right. Trigger the whatever you've been not dealing with. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm weak. No, nah, it's not weak. You're, you'll, you'll get in therapy. It'll, it'll improve. You're, I, I would say you're you're probably kind of disconnected from your feelings. Completely. Giving that, yeah. And so if you can f make a tighter connection between your primary feeling states and an understanding of them, mm -hmm. let's say, um, you'll be able to access them and express them better. Right. And now they're faint. They're, you can barely find them, right? Until they yeah, erupt forward. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is I've noticed there's you, people I dislike and I become very close with them because I can be myself with them because I dislike them. So I don't care how they feel right. towards you're me. Like, you're like a woman who can only have sex with bad guys because is that what that's, that is? that's a part of herself she doesn't like or because uh -huh. she was traumatized or whatever. Right. And so acts it out with bad guys. So. But then I find guys, I'm like, I love this guy. I want to be close with this guy. And I shut down because I don't want to blow it. And that in, in ten, that entails me blowing it. How were you with Rogan? Good, because I, I knew it was just, I was on the mic and I could I can do it. But if we had to have a real connection, that would be harder. You guys, he talks for hours. We did three and a half. Woo, what did that, you talk about? Everything. We went over everything. But uh, he's he's tough because he's, first of all, he's high out of his mind. But also he's uh, he's got a million people in there. And I think he, I don't know, how many of those can you do where you actually, it's hard to stay engaged. With him or he with you? I, I think, you're you talking know. About, you're talking about yourself or him when you say that? Him. Or both of you. I, I, for him to stay engaged? A little bit. I think he's, uh, well, he cares about what he cares about. And he's, he's a very pragmatic guy. And I, I don't, sometimes I'll go off on a thing and I think he's kind of like, what's your point? And I'm like, well, I'm still giving you stuff around the point that's interesting. No, he's very rational. Yeah. Linear. Almost too computery, almost, uh -huh. you know? But I mean, it was a great convo. And you, you just sometimes you talk to somebody and you expect it to go here and then but he goes in a whole new like where to go yeah this surprised you yeah like i was talking about this and he's like you ever done shrooms i'm like well, how do we get to shrooms I, i'm talking about my uh getting molested here did you get molested no i'm just kidding have, have you done shrooms many times i love shrooms uh, that's my favorite drug interesting you ever done them no but if i were to do a hallucin like it. if i were to do a hallucinogen that would be the one it's uh, natural. It only lasts well, five hours. Natural. No Listen, hangover. I can, I can, I know, I can hand you a mushroom that you could lick, and you'll be dead in twelve minutes. So <laughs> stop with the natural stuff. Fuck yeah, let me keep one on Amanita floides will kill you in twelve minutes. That's so, a good so, point. So the, the chemicals are on these plants to, so animals won't eat them. That's why they're on. Ah, them. Uh, but but I didn't know that. But that but that's neither here nor there. Uh, just a molecule, and we have reactions from molecules. We have relationships with molecules, and they're sure. neither good nor bad. But uh, but the thing I like about the psilocybin. I've seen moderate users. I've not seen all the other ones. I've seen brain effects, like really oh, bad stuff, really? lots of bad stuff, all of them. Uh, now, how much you have to use for each to get stuff, we don't know yet because we haven't been able to do the research because they've been evil molecules, which is ridiculous. Right. Uh, psilocybin also is looking to be good for uh, end of life anxiety and dread. Uh, I, I'm uh, sure I would use it there when if it, it does hurt my brain, who cares? You get so euphoric on it. Yeah. And, well, it just you. LSD has an effect too there that might be good mm. and it might have a and psilocybin may have a utility in the depression 
Oh yeah. Right? So we'll, we'll see. What know? do you think about micro dose? You know, some people take like a yeah, little bit a day. Yeah, that scares me. Me be, too. Because again, th- these are the the pure psychedelics like LSD. I've just seen so many bi- neurological problems. I yeah. mean, a lot. Mm-hmm. And so it scares me. We don't know what the threshold is for a given individual, and and I've seen bad trips that people. It, it, the bad trip people want to make it a psychological problem i don't believe that i believe it's opening up a certain pathway in the ah, brain and that pathway is now open and so now you start having panic or you start having whatever and whatever it is so let's take a quick break so i can tell you about our first sponsor upstart of course you know, people many find out the hard way it's uh, getting into debt is easy getting out is difficult especially if your credit score isn't great Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, a revolutionary lending platform that uh, lets you know you're more than just your credit score and offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest rate credit card debt. Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education, your job, your history. It's a smarter interest rate. They believe that you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you and they understand that and they make it fast, simple, easy to check your rate in just a couple minutes. Best part is once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. The next day, it's crazy. Over 300,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash Dr. Drew, that is D-R-D-R-E-W, one word, to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. It will not affect your credit. That is upstart.com slash Dr. Drew. Next up is Best Fiends. This is a puzzle game that you download. It's an app. You get it at the Google Play or Apple Store. Doesn't require the internet once you have downloaded it. It's a puzzle game. It is mind expanding. It's awesome. It's great for travel. The visuals you're going to be amazed by. It's a great thing to play with your family. I played it with my son. You get to collect a bunch of cute characters along the way as you make, as you advance through the puzzles. You'll see why it's best fiends when you see what those great characters are all about best fiends is a five star rated game it's challenging it is fun it's actually an exciting experience it's something you want to play socially you want to challenge each other and when you have all those um great great graphics and uh and you collect the characters it's really kind of fun it's best fiends they update the game monthly with new levels and events does not get old they treat the game like a service to their players and there's been 100 million downloads globally People are into it. You should be too. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. It is a five-star mobile puzzle game on the Apple App Store and Google Play. Download free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That is friends without the R, best fiends. Now let's get back to the show. Let us get on with our show here. I, I, have, we, have we covered most of the territory? Anybody yeah, I think here? just insecure, low self-worth, uh... I feel like I'm. I got a little of that burden thing, where I'm sorry. I, when I was your dad's thing. Twelve minutes late, I wanted to kill myself. I was yeah. in the car going, "Get the fuck out, yeah, yeah, Doctor Drew." You I know. get it. I got it too. I got it too. Yeah. Uh, let's go to some. Uh, let's start easy. Let's start easy. Ready? All right. I'm All easy. Right. This is a uh, email to us. Uh, to, in 2013, I was having liver problems. I was getting sick, so I stopped drinking. Everything got better, and I haven't drunk since. But last year, I started getting sick again. My liver functions were sky high. Changed my whole lifestyle. Then suddenly two weeks ago, my sweat started smelling like bleach. Mm. My doctor told me to wear a clinical strength deodorant. Why is this happening when I sweat? Bleach. There's actually something called uh, like the foul smith, foul, foul fish sweat syndrome. Like uh-huh. you can smell like rotting fish. My girlfriend has that. Oh. No, I'm joking. joking. That's she a vagina smelling joke. Eh, for everybody. Sorry. Uh, this pr- undoubtedly has something to do with his liver disease, but exactly what? Boy, hard to say. I mean. Bleach. Bleach, maybe he's excreting a more, cl- I don't know what that would be, but I've, I've never heard of that, but I'm certain it's due to your liver. Please do take care of that. That's the bigger problem. Can I ask you a weird question? I get, yeah. I get a chronic yeast infection. Where? You know, the package, the, the breakfast. So you get it like between your nuts, on your nuts? Yeah, more nut thigh. And you sure it's yeast and not what's called tinea? I don't know. What do you think? Have they ever scraped it? No, no. Nah, nah, you need I, to see a dermatologist. I usually ride it out. Yeah, that's usually tinea cruris. It's oh. Called. And some people you have to take uh, a, an extended course of an oral antifungal to get rid of it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I tried the uh, tough acting tenactin and it yeah. burns like hell. Mm. If, it if sizzles. You, you're letting it go too long, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. You can use a little, just to start as a, just something you can do for yourself. Cortade over the counter. Use that first, mm-hmm. and then use uh, like Lamisil. Lamisil. Yeah. 
Got it. And All you right. Go back and you can use Lamisil and the Cordae back and forth. This is great. See, that would have been eight hundred bucks at a dumb. I don't think you know, so. It been like pop. four. This is what people. Like, this pissed me off about my. It would have been like forty-eight bucks. Reality. No, I don't have insurance. Reality. Forty-eight bucks. Forty-eight. I have. Bucks. A, I work for a group called Heal that'll come to your house within two hours for ninety bucks, all in. What? It does not cost a lot of money to see a physician. This is the part that I'm people don't you, get. Those one stop, what do you call those? Yeah, don't go to urgent care. That's oh, what you, I go you're to. You're paying for all that infrastructure. Uh, you go to a doctor's office, you're paying for the person sitting at the desk. Can I just walk into a hospital, though? How does that work? That, and you're paying for all that infrastructure. So where do I go? You call a doctor, call a dermatologist, can, call an internist. You can and, call them? And make an appointment. Uh, Anybody. Anybody's taking new patients. I don't know. I feel like those appointments, out of the gate, they're like 200 bucks, right? Uh, sometimes the initial ones can be 150. What sometimes. happened to 48? But but you if said. you're you you can you can go see call Heal. They'll come see you. In two I've hours. never heard of Heal. Why yeah. isn't Heal out there? Okay. Give me some ads. Uh, hey, love the mom cast. I'm a 22 year old male. Whenever I masturbate more than a couple times a week, my face will break into red spots that form wow. into a head like a pimple. These That's bumps God. will continuously weep a slightly orange clear thick fluid until it dries up into a strange orange crystal like head. What? Wow. This was, guy's got a chlamydia. <laughs> Something. I wash and moisturize regularly. I don't understand this curse. I just want to shoot ropes and not have my face break out into gross bumps. <laughs> well, for you, Mark. Keep it high and tight. Love from New Hampshire. Uh, 20-year-old male, whenever I masturbate more than a couple times a week. I'm. Mm, He's lying. He's doing it five times a day, I think. I'm going to bet this is like a false association. Because mm. it sounds really like um, recurrent furunculosis or strep. Mm. And uh, again, you want try some Pfizerhex, some antibacterial scrubs. That might yeah, be. that's Only derm today. Only dermatology, Mark. You're bringing yeah. the dermatology. I have alopecia. I have, do you? On my be In my beard. And when oh, I'm yeah. stressed out, the beard won't grow. Just circles. But then it goes away. It's very weird. You are stressed out. I'm a mess. I have an issue with my semen. I'm a 28-year-old male. And when I get with my girlfriend, dump. What the hell? I'm going to try this again. Mm -hmm. When I get with my girlfriend, dump clips and make white in four strokes. Should I know what that means? That I know thing? the four strokes. <laughs> Good band. Dump yeah. clips. Dump and clips. What's that mean? Is that a rap That's term? That's a new one yeah. for me. Yeah, jizzing inside. Okay. Oh. Okay. What's the clip part? Like a gun? Like a clip of your nuts, you know? I your, think guns. Your nuts are the clip and you're dumping the clips. Like it a magazine. Comes out very liquidy instead of coming out as ropes. She wasn't even asking me to piss on her beat. Her blah, blah, blah. Jesus. Who uh, the hell's Stop me from you? prolapsing my anus. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> These are funny, funny callers. Yeah, liquidy whites. So when I get my girlfriend, I make white four strokes <laughs> coming out very liquidy. Um, liquidy, uh, it means essentially nothing. And it may be that you're, um, the more you empty the chambers, the more liquidy it gets. Sure. For the sure. most part, as a general rule of thumb. Uh, do we have any voice messages? Absolutely, we do. Okay. We I drew his blood once. Oh, oh, that should be looked into. Oh, it was, I was probably 17. All right, you're fine. All right. It's very, hematospermia is very common. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Hey, Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Bobby. I'm a 24 year old male. Um, I have this. Thing that happens to me where more often than not, randomly, I get a sharp pain, like someone stabbing a ballpoint pen into my gooch. Yeah. But I also see it happening after I sneeze sometimes, yeah. and I I have worries that it may be, you know, connected to the prostate or something like that. Can be. Um, I have no history of prostate issues in my family. Right. You're 24. Uh, but, uh, stop him. You're 24. It's likely not to be prostate. You get prostatitis, but it's not a big deal. Uh, that is a spasm of the pubococcygeus muscle. So you have all this pelvic musculature, and it can spasm. It can feel sharp like that. It can also feel very visceral, like like it's like, like somebody punched you in the nuts almost. Yeah, that yeah. Kind of, you, does that sound familiar? No, most, most no. people have experienced that. Maybe once or twice. Yeah, so all good. Don't worry about it. Not wow. much you can really do about it. So, e so easy going. This yeah, is great. I hate those good. doctors. Go, oh, you got AIDS. You're nah, fucked. Nah, you know? Is that what they normally say to you? Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, what else you got? A voice message. Hey, Dr. Drew. This is Bradley calling. Bradley. I uh, just watched the most recent episode where you guys witnessed uh, a man peeing for an abnormal length mm. on someone. And I pee for like 90 seconds sometimes. I've actually won bets at parties. Like when I'm drinking, I can pee for at least a minute and a half. Easy. Uh, is that an issue? Like I can just really hold it in. Yeah, just curious, 
curious about the the P. Yes. Keep it right tight. Yes, sir. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations. Uh, keep keep uh, keep those bets coming because you yeah. should win them. Secondly, we have each of us have differing capacities, right? Some guys have large seminal vesicles, can store a lot of semen, and then mm. guys get preoccupied. I want to produce more semen. Peter no. North. Yes. Uh, some people have a large bladder. Some people have a distensible bladder. And to some extent, that bladder evacuation is the alchemy of the resistance created by the bladder neck and the prostate versus the volume and stretch on the bladder, right? So if you're putting a small stream out with a large volume, it's going to go for a longer period of time, right? But the main thing is the difference is dimensions and stretch on the bladder. That's all that people can tolerate. I have the craziest, biggest bladder because my dad made me hold my piss in for hours because he's, he's like you got to stretch it that's why you wet the bed i don't know if that's right but not a bad thought not a bad thought so i have the biggest bladder and we used to play a game called edward 40 hands did yeah. you ever play that no that's where you tape 240s Sounds male erotic you tape 240s to your hands so you can't you know pick up anything you're taped giant 40 ounce beers and you have to finish them uh before you piss because you can't even undo your zipper and i would always win good for you because i had the craziest bladder and how did you end up getting over the uh, nocturnal urination? I think I just grew out of it. Just stop one day. Yeah, I still don't sleep. I'm on a lot of sleeping pills. Yeah, yeah but I, I I don't wet the bed. Like trazodone? What are you taking? Uh, a lot of melatonin. Yep. Then I do the Tylenol PM, which I'm not crazy about. And somebody yep. just gave me a handful of Ambien. So that stuff's been Careful working. with that. Careful how do you, with that. How, do you, how do you mean? Uh, you do it more than a couple of weeks, you get dependent on it. Ah, oh, I'm already hooked. I've done it three nights in a row. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So spread it out, like once or twice a week at most. All right, all right. You spread it out. You can you can use it once in a while, but uh, and then whoever's prescribing other medicines to you, make sure they know you're doing that. Oh, really? Because it can start to make your anxiety worse during the ah, day. Ah, yeah. God, I yeah. hate myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. It's I'll all get good. off of it. But I can't sleep if I get off of it. What do I do? Meditate? Well, go get something else prescribed. There's a lot of other stuff you can do. Oh, you do right. Does melatonin work for you? Nah, not really. I just think it's a, what do you call it, pseudonym? Placebo? Yes. Uh, well, there, there's a bunch of decent sleep medicines out there that okay. might help you. What might do you help. like? Uh, I use melatonin. It was crazy effective for me. Wow. Yeah, it's must weird. be nice. Yeah. Uh, but if I needed sleep, the, the the ambient sort of class works very well for me If I on a rare occasion when I, when I use it, and I would. Okay. Um, but there's other ways to go about this. All right, thanks. Yeah. The traditional, Boy, the, the starting space is trazodone. As people start trazodone. using Trazodone. Yeah. All right. I knew a black chick with her name. In New Orleans? Trazodone, yeah. Trazodone yeah. Williams. You know, we used to have a skit with uh, David Allen Greer. Where, where <laughs> I we, know we'd, it. We'd look up the PD. We'd just look up a, a group of uh, the PDR and pharmaceuticals, <laughs> and he'd just point at a thing, and he'd, he'd become... Uh, that is so funny. He'd use the as a name for an, an African-American colleague or, or family member. Yeah. Uh, let's go to more voice message. Hey, Dr. Drew. This is Felicia from Texas. So my main mom and Christina, a.k.a. the personality and water champ, she used to have this theory on how the farts push the poop out. Right. And mm. I know you discredited it so there was no correlation, but I think there is maybe a, a slight difference between her theory and my theory, and I'd like to know what you think about my theory. I think that the farts don't push the poop out. They actually pull the poop out. I mean, <laughs> give it a thought. When you have farts, there's going to be poop coming, and it's a vacuum, right? So you push the air out, which then pulls the shit down, which then is ready to come out. Oh, my and God. And once the out, you don't normally have after shit farts. So wow, I like this broad. What do you think, Dr. Drew? Well, Does the, do the farts pull the shit out? Thanks a lot. Hope to hear from you. Have a great show. She's like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, your mom's house listeners and viewers uh, spent a lot of time oh, is that what contemplating is? very weird stuff. Yeah. Cogitating on the strange. Well, there's no answers so, for these things. All right. That's so why. here's the deal. So gas forms within the colon mm -hmm. because of the bacteria. It's just forming in there. And it's it, if you look at an x-ray of the colon, it's just all over the place. Yeah. It's not doing anything. And, and your colon is doing this, moving everything through. Your mm -hmm. colon pushes everything through. It's uh -huh. called peristalsis. And when it gets down into the ampulla, look at those, extra, those pictures of Whoa. colons and gas. I mean, the one down there on the second, on the bottom right, the yeah. one to the left. There, the one from the left. That, your, that's a lot of that's gas. That's gas. Stuff in there. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of gas in there. And uh, it, wow, that'll kill a Jew. It could. Uh, and uh, I don't like that one. 
Uh, uh, gas chamber, bit. I get you. All I right. get you. Uh, I know you're on the. I know you're in the tribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big fan. Thank you. All my heroes. Uh, so where was I? So, so I was thinking the other day. Strangely, this question came up, and I debunked it. But then I thought, nah. In a weird way, sometimes when people are, it gets into the ampulla, and there's gas and stool there, and you push, the 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 fart does kind of push. It comes out in a little bit explosive. Yes. And so, it, you know, that those muscles aren't perfect instruments down there. And so you're releasing the poo and the pop, the sort of follow on. Is oh, the, yeah. Yeah. So to some extent at the very end, there's some push in some situations. But for the most part, all of it's just getting pushed through with peristalsis. And it just gets where it gets. And then it comes out. Can I ask you a queef question? Oh, of course. So I don't know how I'm doing package wise. You know, I'm a solid six. Uh-huh. It's average. Okay. But my gal queefs like it's uh, going out of style. And I does that mean I'm not filling it up all the way? Or what, what does that mean? I pull it out and just it's like a like that thing at the auto park, you know, with the, the wavy inflatable right. guy. Yeah, yeah. Just the labia. Very, does she, does she, now, here's the thing about that. Do you, does it bother you at all? No, I like it. I get it. I get you in like there it. and get a face right, right. full of air. Yeah, yeah. You like it. And women get embarrassed I by know. it for no reason. Well, I get it. Your vag is making a weird fart noise. But it should be like you should laugh about it together. It should be well, an, we laugh. Should we enjoy laugh. it. And but I'm saying what is is that is that something up with my fuck technique? Piston, right? Yeah. Pushing the air in. Yeah. Maybe likes, you're coming a little too okay. far out. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that might reduce it's it a like little a, bit. All right. But some people it's just that's just the nature of how they're sort of configured together okay if that makes sense I, I wouldn't worry about anybody's sizes or anything like that it's just just the nature of how things sort of connect flap as they're I moving see, right I does see. that make sense and it yeah. pushes a little bit in what about susan is she is she blowing a little smoke downtown uh, it sort of scares me but you know my wife's name but anyway i'm a fan but but, but also uh, i fucked her no uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh we've laughed a couple times but, but, oh, not, right. but not regularly. Not okay. Regularly. But okay. it's uh, it's high comedy when it happens. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's the best, best ever. It's better it's than the, the Chappelle special. A hundred percent. So let's, uh, we're going to go back to some voice messages, but I thought maybe it's time to go. Speaking of queefing, I, yeah. I, I don't get to see these videos ahead of time, but I've noticed the title for this one is Anal Breathing. Ooh. So I'm guessing it's a good follow on to your topic here. Am I, I, love I, am it. I writing it up? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a, f- it's a fun instructional. <laughs> My name is Joe Kramer, and I'm a massage instructor. With this self-anal massage, you can reclaim an important part of yourself. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. You know little babies enjoy their assholes. Oh, oh my God. No. When you were very young, you had no shame. <laughs> you certainly didn't carry tension I'm feeling shame just watching muscles. this guy yeah. speak. We were taught that there are places on our body that we should avoid. And the oh, asshole God. is at the top of the list. Stop, stop. Oh, wait a minute. I, I like that we call it, it's like asshole. Yeah. It's like <laughs> the, the asshole. This guy's definitely got baby shit in his stash. Well, that's what concerns me. He 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 gives a little bit of the creep factor. Oh, right? for sure. Yeah, God, uh, peace and love, peace and love, but... Uh, <laughs> A little bit of the creep factor. Okay, uh, and he's going to tell us. I was 30 years old, oh, oh. I oh, hated my asshole. Oh, of course you did. And nonstop <laughs> inflamed hemorrhoids. Oh, Whoa. Well, I can understand you might not like that. surgery on my asshole. Whoa. Breathing techniques demonstrated in this video, I have relaxed and healed my asshole. Oh, that's okay, not so bad. So stop. Yeah. So right. we're both going to sign off on the goal here. Yeah. Like, like this guy... <sighs> The guy had some energy around his asshole, <laughs> and it caused tension there. And there is a whole, you know, I have, believe it or not, there is a world of manometrics around that region, uh-huh. meaning helping people deal with the pressure they generate there. Right. And I've seen people develop obsessive compulsions after anal surgeries mm. and that are healed with stuff, believe it or not, kind of like this. Mm-hmm. Not, not quite this creepy. Yeah. A little more medical. <laughs> But here we go. I recommend clenching your asshole in rhythm with your breathing. Wow. I'd like to show you four different anal breathing rhythms. It's like Kegels or whatever. Kegels? Except they're just anals. Yes. In this case. The first is just a sigh, a deep <laughs> breath. A sigh. <sighs> on the inhale, clench, and on the exhale, relax. 
I don't know if I feel bad for this oh, guy or like him or yeah. appreciate what he's trying to do. I, I have all these mixed feelings about him. I'm jealous of his comfort. If I was doing this, I <laughs> definitely wouldn't make a video of it. No, I would charge a lot to talk to people about it and then <laughs> deny it. <laughs> right. I'm kidding. The next breath is faster and clench faster. All the efforts on the inhale. <sighs> okay. All the right. third breath is a step breath on the inhale, a double step. So it's like this. And you have two steps in your right, clench. So you're controlling your Kegel muscles. Same, what, same old deal. Yeah. What does this guy do for a living, you think? I, he's a massage therapist. He's oh, like, wow. So he made this, a career out of this bullshit? Well, not this. I, so this was sort of his, uh, his Rubicon. <laughs> this, this, he was a frontiersman on this one, I suspect. Rubicon was another black guy I played football with. Really? Yeah, Rubicon Jones. Yeah. Here we go. I like sure, the you're completely relaxing on the exhale. Often we continue to clench our muscles when we think we're relaxing. This them. is like a new Mr. Rogers sort of. <laughs> um, I mean, he looks like Mr. Rogers when right. he's dressed and stuff. And I like the way the, if you're seeing this on YouTube, he, he shows us with his hand yes. what his uh, anal musculature is doing. What do you think the, the Odds of him 50-50. What do you think the odds of him being a homosexual? Well, he does come off. That's the vibe you yeah. get. But that may be us being judgmental. and you know. But he's also got a stash, and he's obsessed with his uh, back pussy. And to be fair, this looks this looks old. Like, how old? Yeah. Where did you guys find this? This has got to be early 80s. That's what it looks like to me, too. Absolutely. All right, keep going. Yeah, definitely from a while ago. Yeah. The last breath is a flutter, a very fast breath. Do about 15 with me. If you do a hundred anal breaths a day, you will start to let go of anal tension. Okay. Anal breath is just called farting. Y yeah, right? right? It's sort of the, kind of the opposite of breathing, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's but an there's exhale. always an expiration phase. But but um, these kegels, which is what he's talking about, yeah, um, really control your bladder more than control your anus. Mm. Uh, and I'm I I don't we've never really. I've never really seen anything that suggests it's a way of relaxing that region. It's a way of connecting with it, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. And he said he hated his asshole, so maybe he just felt more connected to it afterwards. I'll tell you one thing, though. If you're going to snuggle some horse through an airport, this is the guy to do it. A little, little H, give it to this guy. I bet he's got asshole muscles like uh, uh, Lou Ferrigno. Uh-huh. So if you're going to be a uh, heroin mule. Yeah, he's your man. He looks like an up and up citizen. Yeah, you'd never imagine. No, he's all buttoned up and you know clean cut, and then before you know it, he's pulling out some some yam yam out of his can. <laughs> How many different words for heroin do you have? <laughs> well, you know, I'm from from New Orleans, oh, okay. it's going around. When did you move out of New Orleans? Uh, 2007. And what made you move? Comedy, so, New York. There's no stand up in in New Orleans. Really. What, what's your favorite club in New York? Oh, the Comedy Cellar. It's crazy, right? Great. I mean, I'm there three three times a night. R regularly? Oh, I'm an animal. Yeah, I go nuts. There's, oh, because there's well, we love going there. Maybe I, saw, I may have seen you maybe, there. Maybe, maybe. Feeling. There's 11 clubs in New York City alone, so you can just bounce around all night. Yeah, but the Comedy Cellar is the one. That's the, the, and, the and mecca. And there's nothing. For people out here, they would not understand what that is. Because I think of the comedy clubs here are these big open dining spaces and things. Right, like, no, like, no, no, no. No, this is... This is the size of this set. Yeah. With 300 people in it. Exactly. And the comedians are plastered against yep. the wall. You can't take two steps forward. You land in the audience. It's all about the jokes. You know, yeah. we don't, I feel like in LA, there's a little more chucking and jiving, back flipping and tap dancing. In New, or in New York, it's just, here's the writing. Joke, 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 joke. Yeah. And uh, it's the same club that you see Louis in at the beginning of his Louis C.K. show. Louis's there. Yeah. Chris Rock pops in. Is Louis Chappelle. doing okay there now? Or are they still being... He's uh, allowed ostracized. there. The, the club loves him. It's just the uh, the weird, uh, weird. Uh, some ladies get upset and walk out, you know. Huh. And uh, Still sells out everywhere, though. So I'm going to be in New York next week. Maybe I want to come see you. Come by. Yeah, yeah. We'd love to Let's have you. Let's exchange numbers and stuff. Because I, I, I haven't been there in a while. So last time I went there, I went there to see Spade. And oh, he yeah. was like, oh, yeah, so we'll talk afterwards. He disappears. Ah, he's well, like, he's <laughs> got to go bang some 19-year-old. <laughs> Okay, so is that it for the anal breathing? Is that enough anal breathing? Yeah, I think that's okay. enough. Do you want to show, uh, since since it's become our greatest hit, do you want to show um, our our uh, picture of the the sewage? <laughs> I don't know how to oh. describe it. Because oh, Mark right. was asking about it when he got here, and we went, oh, well, maybe we'll show it to you. Please. Is it time? <laughs> yeah, coming right up. Okay.
and maybe you can help us understand it. We've really not come up with an adequate explanation for this yet. All right. Um, there he is. Whoa. He's in a full leather suit, although his ha full leather, including his head. And what imagine something over time. That is a cesspool. Oh. Yes, yes. Oh. Here's the twist. That's the asshole breather guy. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah. You finally made sense of this for us. What the hell is going on here? Now, oh. Oh. It's so bizarre. It's just really, it's hard to watch, hard to understand. Isn't that un uh, Look, with the unsanitary? hair, bringing the hair. Yeah, yes. Oh. Look, he's bringing up stuff. You, I, I can't. You'd think there'd be more chunks. Uh, yeah, probably they put something. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. This is the, the sequel to The Chocolate Factory. Oh, yeah. Holy hell. Willy Wonka. Yeah. Oh, man. This is all a uh, human shit. Uh, evidently, it might even be his own because it's a it's a cesspool, right? I mean, it's the wow. That's a lot of shit. I don't think you could accumulate. Well, you have yeah, yeah. You have to. It's you don't empty your cesspool, but every few months, oh, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Okay, we've seen enough. We're all wow. What is the live leak? What was? Where did you find this? Uh, no, it's just like a website. It's a uh, alternative to YouTube. What? Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not like what the video is called. You know. It's, yeah, I'm it's just like saying though. Hip hop type. I no kidding. Alternative to YouTube. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Woo. Wow! Uh, so. made, this this whole pod makes you feel really normal. People are That's talking my about goal. jizzing uh, water and swimming and shit. And they got the asshole queefer. I mean, this is great. Mission accomplished. I've told you I have low self esteem too. Corolla pees the bed. We're, you're just you just. Whoa! Gonna... Look at that. Uh, yeah, How like... is that guy getting laid by these two hot skanks? And uh, we're out here, you know, banging. Chicks, we gotta buy dinner to. So, Mark, the people at home aren't seeing this. Can you describe what you're seeing? All right, there's a, a old chunky guy with a beard who's fat and gross, and he's pissing in his own mouth and pissing on two pretty hot ladies outside by a pool. And now he's pissing in his mouth and spitting it on them, and they're loving it. And these gals are rubbing their own. Uh, all, all, all I just could, I could think of is. Uh, I can think of like you see the deuce where they're getting into more and more alternative stuff, and she's like, "I will not do that." Oh, now they're scissoring, and he's peeing on both of them. And they're drinking it. What the fuck? I'm wet in the bed and wanting to kill myself. This guy's got oh. two hot. Let's wind it up. Showed you. Want you to, he wants you to feel better. Yeah. You feel better. Oh, well, wait. Where do you stand, dong wise? Are you doing better than that? Personally. Yeah. Yeah. Per what do you mean personally? I, I wasn't. Of I wasn't watching very carefully. I think it's. Uh, Wow, now she's peeing out of her slit, and he's I drinking it with it. a straw. Not a paper straw, by the way. Those turtles. The poor turtles. Maybe that should have been the video to get people outraged over <laughs> plastic straws. <laughs> yeah, but these girls are, you know, looking. These girls are at uh, Gelson's, you know. We just walk right by them. Isn't that crazy? They look normal, right? They look like normal ladies. Yeah, well, they're not. Wow, you anyway. never know. And we're assholes for saying retard. This guy's pissing on on minors. It's all topsy turvy, Drew. Twenty two year old males experienced a few public speaking induced anxiety attacks over the last couple of years. Prior to that, I had done several speeches with crowds, with crowds nearly a thousand, no problem. I'm concerned they're connected to my occasional use of MDMA in college. Interesting. I consumed the drug at moderate doses about a dozen times over three years. I've never had any dependency, but refrain from illicit drug use. Other than that, other than that, I eat well, exercise, blah blah blah. So, uh, piss on me, beat me, Josh will never come. That's his uh, acronym at the end. Um, <laughs> so, um, interesting, uh, MDMA is associated with panic attacks, mm. um, but usually it's like in pretty close proximity to the using. So he's talking about something he used in the past, a few, four, four or five years ago, and now he's getting them. Panic attacks are one of these things that once you get, you kind of keep getting them. Yeah, it's like a boner. <laughs> you, once you can't get one, you keep thinking about not getting one. Now you can't get one the right. next time. That's right. It's, and boners work both ways too, right? When you're a kid and you don't want to get one, here it comes. Yeah, so yeah, good point. Both both directions. Uh, and panic is is a, essentially again the way I think of it is sort of a circuit that opens up, and once that circuit is there, it keeps kind of coming. And so the, the the trick is to learn how to manage it when it develops and to decrease the probability of an attack occurring. You could consider indrol when you um public speak it's a beta blocker so it blocks mm. all the physiological effects of the anxieties that tends to slow down some of people's again it's an accelerated anxiety that just sure. sort of goes up and um the other thing is mastery and so the more you speak without getting panicked the less likely it will be able to happen yeah i so get really get... bad i've gotten bad ones on stage 
And you just got to go, hey, hey, shut up. Fuck you just got to push. You, you just got to push. push. It's the only way. I used to get fear of flying, got over mm. that. And I've had panic attacks. Uh, like I had panic attack. I'll get them sometimes when I haven't slept. And so I was on the Today Show. It essentially was three in the morning for me. Ah. And I had a bunch of coffee. And I'll never forget Matt Lauer leaning into me like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> because in the middle of me saying something, I was like, wow. oh, dude, I guess I'm, I'm, I got to get get my get my shit together keep moving well i mean in your defense he just hit his uh rape button probably so the door probably locked may, <laughs> no but, it was it on the air on camera but why why did he say what were you doing that uh i was sort of freezing i think i think Whoa. i didn't i sort of froze for a second and didn't I, and i remember him just kind of leaning in like that's scary and i thought oh keep going just don't, yeah don't, just because you you'll blank when you panic right of course your, your brain just goes eh, can't, I, can't move I did the Tonight Show on Friday, I think it was, and it's third time. But it's I'm doing five minutes of stand up, so you got to bring it, you know. And I I had like four moments of brain farts where my brain go it went, well, we got nothing. We don't know your next joke, and I had to go, fuck you, get it together, come on, like in within milliseconds, and then deliver the joke. Do you get lots of panics where you, uh, excuse me, dreams where you are like on a stage and All you don't the know time. the script or All you don't, the time. don't know the music to something yep. you're supposed to. Yeah, those are anxiety dreams. I get those too. I get it's dreams. Like a test you weren't prepared for. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I get a lot of dreams about big guys yelling at me and me being like, "God, I wussed out." Well, that's an interesting one. Yeah, I get all all that stuff. Oh, that's why Rogan scared you. No, that's he doesn't why, scare me. But that's why I you like clued him. into his bully steroids, whatever you were I, saying. Oh, I think like, people, a lot of like nerdy people, see him like that and go, "I don't like that guy," and they uh, have a, an associate. But I like him. Yeah, I'm a fan. Well. uh, Mark, it's been a pleasure. Ah, that was it's a good weird to see ending. You again. Damn it. No, see, no, we're, we're, be, we're, we're, we're wrapping. We're not done. We're not ended. All right. Let's we'll give you a chance up. to recoup. I love those glasses. They're awesome. Thanks. I, um, I, if I hide behind them. You can see me at the Dr. Drew podcast, the Adam and Dr. Drew podcast, uh, this live podcast. Also, uh, don't forget the daytime, uh, noontime radio show on AM 790 here in Los Angeles. You can find that online as well at kbcradio.com or at my website, drdrew.com. Uh, get your Dr. F. Dark merchandise at merchmethod.com. Uh, the don't pearl up slash Tom Segura. Slash Tom Segura. Oh, mm. I didn't. I always forget that part. Merchmethod.com slash Tom Segura. The uh, don't pearl up your anus uh, t shirt seems to be very popular. <laughs> it's uh, properly shamed. I'm properly ashamed of it, which is generally my note on this show. Generally, I'm just ashamed of it. I, I end up every show, I end up with something over my face. I'm so ashamed. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just, I mean, I like it, but I get shamed by it. That's uh -huh. how you know it's a good show. There, exactly. Yeah. So some people how people like that. So uh, what's coming going forward for you? Uh well, I got I got a podcast with Joe List, who you met. He's yep. a squirrely weirdo. He's great, he's awesome. Funny guy, killer act, and we have a podcast called Tuesdays with Stories where we get together on Monday, talk about the road, and it comes out on Tuesday and it's irreverent and fun and gay. You guys do it in the village? In the village. We do it in my apartment, just sitting on a couch, double mics. It's on YouTube, it's on iTunes, the whole thing. Uh yeah, I run a couple shows in New York. I got a website. I'm on the road every weekend for like the next eight months. What do you mean you run a couple shows? In New York, I run a few stand-up shows. Like I run a show at the Comedy Cellar, and I run a show at New York Comedy Club. Me meaning it's your, you book it and you, I book it, and, I, and you do comedy too? I do a set, and uh, I pick who does a set Oh, that's on awesome. When is that next week? It's every Tuesday at the Cellar at 10.30. I got to try to come. To come by. Yeah, we have, yeah, yeah. We have Michelle Wolf on. We'll have right. you know big Michael Che showed up last, Dave Attell, you name it. And then I do one at the New York Comedy Club on Wednesdays. That's at where 8 o'clock. Where is that? I don't know where that one is. There's two of them. There's one in uh, Gramercy on 24th, and there's one on 4th Street in the East Village. And I do it at the East Village. And the Gramercy is, must be across the street from the uh, Gotham or something. Right? Uh, that that's that's the west side. Gotham is 23rd and 7th. Okay, this is 24th it. and 1st. Got it, got it, got it, got it's it. All over the, it's all over the island. But yeah, a lot of stuff cooking. I got a million clips on YouTube. You want to check me out. And uh, I have a comedy hour special on Comedy Central app website somewhere oh, do yeah. you you like living in new york oh i just bought my apartment i best. love it it's the i best, love it right yeah a lot of people you know la is great la is great. not great la is la is is falling apart it, i i go to new york i literally i didn't know i could be in love with a place oh it's the energy and yeah. the, the people yep. and you don't yep. have to talk to them but they're all there and the cultures and all that bull i love the subway too i'm yep. not a big fan of driving but can i say about la you and corolla will shit on la all day and i see the shopping carts and i see the hobos but you go through beverly hills or west hollywood and it's beautiful right and you melrose is cool i mean los right. Feliz so, is so cool. only rich people get to have nice environments in los angeles yeah and, i guess and, that's who, what rich it is. people who don't drive 
Uh-huh. Because if you're driving anywhere, it's a, just a mad. It is just, hell to drive. Just horrible. You can't get anywhere. How late you were today. I know. It took me 40 minutes. I, I'm in WeHo. See? Crazy. So, But I like the gays. <laughs> They're the best neighborhoods. Oh, a- absolutely. Yeah, and I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I don't listen, mind. Gay a, communities a are couple. wonderful. I, I have, I have th- two of the three homes I've owned, I've bought from gay couples. Is that right? Because it's just. Woo, it's just, smart. Yeah, they it's, just do it right. Too bad they can't reproduce. Well, they can be great parent, you know, families. I know, but you, you want more gay. Oh, kids I want more there. Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. I guess that's the cool thing about gays is unlike Jews, gays uh, don't need a gay guy to make one. You see what oh, I'm slow saying? Slow down, slow down, <laughs> slow down. All right, let me explain this. So, gay gays. Jews are all about we got to live on. You got to marry a Jew, and all Jews want to keep making Jews. Right, right. So they need to keep the keep need, the genetics inter. Yes, inter- but gay guys, if you if I fuck a Russian lady or a black lady or an Australian, you can still lady, create a gay male. It can still create a gay male or, or a gay, gay female. female. You're right. How cool is that? They just pop up. There's so, no, so there's diversity. There's, there's no much more diversity. And, and there's diversity. Oh, it's fantastic. Gay is the only one that you could be a gay Muslim, a gay Jew, a gay black, a gay Mexican. You can be anything. Man, woman, child. I see an arrest in Mark's future. I think what? he's going to get arrested. I think it's coming. This is progress. All right, my friend. Really a pleasure. All Thank right. you for coming in. Sorry we appreciate it. The, the tardy. Don't be ridiculous. And I will see. I'll, I want to really want to come see you next week. We'd love to have you. Off. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. Praise Allah. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.